Hi, it's Cameron Reynolds. We're fixing to move this pallet of bees to a new bee yard, but I had to show it to you all. Those of you who have been following us, this was the colony that had 94 mites and an alcohol wash of half a cup of bees. Crazy high numbers, extremely weak colony, and we actually fixed the colony. It took over a year to get it to this point, and we have put a lot of work into it and haven't made a dime um, off of selling nukes or queens or definitely didn't make any honey off of this hive. It was so weak, but they're, they're clean. They look really good. We're fixing to dive down in here and show you. Get off of me, you stink bug. And just, I cannot believe it. I would have not taken this bet at all. We'll be talking more about what we did to fix this. It was very extreme, and a lot of people have been like, oh no, that'll stress the bees out doing that. Don't do that. You know what, compared to the mites, very few things stress the bees out that much. The mites are just that egregious. And getting them cleaned up and requeening did more than anything else could. Now, to back up, this was a colony that originally was a black looking bee. It was really neat, nothing like I, I had in any of my bee yards. And we run about 300 hives. And it was just unique looking. I caught it in a swarm trap and I thought, well, we'll keep this around and see what happens. Man, they were so infested full of mites when we got them and they grew pretty big and in their second season the mites were just at just stupid high levels viruses all over the place and i didn't think they were going to make it but what we wanted to show is that oxalic acid vapor is not as lethal as what a lot of people think that it is we did five rounds of oxalic acid vapor with a, a little higher than recommended dose and still only went from 94 mites in an al alcohol wash to like 34 or 32. It's one of those numbers right there. Now keep in mind there was if you're getting 94 in a mite wash that means that what's in the brood is a lot higher than that. So I mean once that next round of brood the population is going to go way up. I imagine that we reduced a lot of mites with that oxalic acid vapor but it was not enough. A lot of people think that just doing one oxalic acid vapor treatment a week during heavy brooding time is sufficient. It is not. People need to stop telling other beekeepers that this is an effective way to reduce the mites down. That's just not how it works. It's not that lethal of a treatment. It only kills for a few days at the most. Wow, they have really got this tied up in here. Let me move this box out of the way. You've noticed I've taken that excluder. It is time to take those off. It's not like we were making honey production. I like to use them just to know where my queen's at. Let's get this over a little bit. Look at all that bee glue everywhere. All right, but who would have thought that little bitty dinky colony that came out of winter with like three frames of bees would actually have built up this much. I just got stung. Ow. All right. I pinched it. I'm not used to wearing gloves. I threw these on. Thought, well, you know, it's been sprinkling here and there. Bees have been a little grouchy. I'll throw these gloves on. And, you know, I get stung because I couldn't feel what I was doing. Sometimes they can get in the way. It doesn't hurt as bad through the gloves, though. Wow. I have not hardly fed them either. They've been really bringing in the fall honey. See all that, those resources right there? That's really good. Only healthy bees are going to be doing stuff like that. Oh, there's a queen right there. She's just looking for room to lay. Awesome. All right. Now we definitely want to put this one back in there. Let's see what our brood pattern looks like. Now, there's a lot that has happened. I'll explain shortly. Queen-wise. All right, we got some brood over here. Looks pretty clean. Let's go to the next frame, though. Look at that brood pattern right there. It's not too bad considering where, where they were last year. Looking pretty good. Yeah, larvae down in here. They're just starting to cap this here in the middle. Got some white larvae. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I never would have thought they would have survived like this, but... So after the five rounds of oxalic acid vapor, obviously we did another alcohol wash. Well, they're just capping that as well. Really nice. 
and we put two strips of apivar in what at the time was probably about four or five frames of bees because the mites were just so high and then we treated later three more times with oxalic acid vapor then after that the alcohol wash yielded no mites in the alcohol wash but that was two strips of apivar and eight rounds of oxalic acid vapor excessive right well there's some results for you these bees are still alive and uh, they're just now the problem was though after those mites were gone it was coming up on winter and there were still viruses in the hive now we requeened them earlier but coming out of winter they still didn't look quite right a lot of emerging brood there so after uh, you know April rolled along, the, there's still little signs of viruses left. We requeened them again, broke what was about six frames of bees in half, and I dropped queen cells in both of them, and that allowed a brood break to happen. We were feeding them pollen patties, feeding them a little bit of sugar syrup, trying to get their system just cleaned out. And the best thing that happened was the spring flow happened. All that diverse, nutritious pollen full of probiotics, vitamins and minerals. The, the nectar has a lot of wonderful things for the bee's gut as well. I really felt like that, just getting to that point with a new queen, no mites, just help clean the viruses the rest of the way up. And this colony has been building up ever since. And I mean, there's just eggs all in there, more capped brood. Let's, let's just keep going. Now, don't ever let your colonies get that high on their mite loads. Don't trust a manufacturer that's telling you that you'll never have to treat with these bees because they're resistant. Because, well, there's a lot of phonies out there, for one. Look at all that nice brood right there. That bee bread down in there, it's gorgeous. Now, some, some breeders really are trying to raise a good mite-resistant bee, but even if they do have one that's pretty resistant, wow, nice. You still need to double check it. What happens if your queen goes out, uh, you know, gets requeened, and then the virgin goes out and mates with 20 different drones, and none of them hardly have any mite resistance? You think you're going to have it on that next queen the same? No. So there's a lot of variables out there. It's always good to double check. Just because you catch some bees in a swarm or a swarm trap does not mean they're resistant at all. It might just mean that they came from somebody else's bees, which is more than likely. Or it could mean that they just uh, swarm so often that they've kept ahead of the mites, but they could still have quite the load. So, I mean, there's a lot of variables to it. At the end of the day, the only way to really know is to do an alcohol wash or some type of check. I'm not a fan of sugar shakes. I wish they were more accurate, but they are not accurate in my opinion at all. Lot, too many people have tried them out and like, oh, there's not that many mites. And then, you know, a month later or so, their bees are starting to show a lot of signs of mite problems. Alcohol wash is the most reliable. All right, so let's get this all put back together. What a nice looking hive that we have now. I really feel when winter comes around, they go brewless. We are going to hit them with a round of oxalic acid vapor and clean them up again. Once they have all March and all that good spring flow, April, May, this colony is going to do good things for us next year but it's time to move them out of the shed they're in the way and because i'm running my mouth i'm not focusing on what i'm doing i'm fixing to put an edge honey frame right in the middle of the brood and that's why you shouldn't talk and keep bees at the same time so anyways if you have any questions on what we did to help save this colony i'm blown away that this worked a lot of people are like oh my goodness you're a bad beekeeper for letting it get this far out of control well, sometimes you have to do that to learn. I learned a lot from this, and I hope that you all have learned. Oxalic acid is not as lethal as what a lot of people tell you. Alcohol washes can be very important to knowing what's going on, if your treatments are actually working, where you stand. Also, um, not giving up on your bees, and also the value, I think, of good queens, because when you can give your bees a new queen, it can really help clean things up because I truly believe that queens can come down with virus symptoms as well and that's going to translate into their brood and that they're going to get removed from the brood selection because uh, basically if her brood's contaminated with anything or even if it's a little inbred the bees can sense that and they will cannibalize it discard it and you're going to get spotty brood patterns so great queens 
dead mites and good nutrition those are the keys to beekeeping so thanks for watching this video if you have any questions leave them below and i'm going to move this frame from the middle to the outside